Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at the work that was done by these two scientists, Meselson and Stahl. You can see them hanging out here, enjoying themselves at a local park. A lot of people have problems with this particular experiment and understanding how they've actually set it up. So um, you can try to look at the details and understand what's going on. That's your ultimate goal if you really want to be at a six or a seven, or you can just understand the overall big picture of what's going on. So I'm going to try to explain both. So first, a little bit of background information. You need to know that DNA as a molecule, as a macromolecule that's made up of nucleotides, contains nitrogen. There's nitrogenous bases in there. A, T, C, and G, these are all nitrogenous bases. And their work was to try to figure out exactly how DNA replicates. So there's different models for how DNA can actually replicate. It's, for example, it's like you could copy a painting. So you could have the DNA molecule sitting there, and then right next to it, you construct the exact same uh, DNA molecule by putting all the pieces together, by looking at that other one. You could have it where each strand could separate and then it becomes a template for forming the new one. So they really wanted to figure out what was actually going on in terms of DNA replication. And we'll look at this diagram here in a second. The overall big picture is that this experiment here provided evidence for something called semi-conservative replication. If you break that down, it means that replication is happening. So we're making a copy of something, but it's semi-conservative. Semi-conservative meaning part of the original is conserved or saved. Part of the original is conserved or saved. And if you look at this diagram here at the end, you can see that we've colored these two strands different. So I have a red strand here and I have an orange strand. And the idea is that when I'm making a copy, I use one of them as a template. So the red one becomes the template that I use to build the orange one. And if you've looked at DNA sequences, then you know you get things like A, T, C, C, G, G, C, T, A, A, A. And by looking at one, which base or which letter is on the left, you can figure out which base or letter is on the right. So we can even read the template. So if I see an A on the left, then I know there's got to be a T on the right. If I see a G on the left, I know it's got to be a C on the right, and so on and so forth. So this experiment produced the evidence for semi-conservative replications. So when we say that DNA replication is a semi-conservative process, we owe this to uh, Meselson and Stahl for their really, really clever experiment that they used here. So I'm going to try to summarize this and uh, make sure you understand what's going on. You also have to understand this idea, a little bit of background. Besides the fact that DNA contains nitrogen, there are different isotopes of nitrogen, and we can detect the different isotopes of nitrogen. Most nitrogen atoms are of the type that are called nitrogen N14, N14. But there's another type which has a slightly different um, nucleus configuration, which ends up with N15. And we can detect N15, and it actually makes the atoms and the molecules slightly heavier, slightly heavier, because we're actually adding neutrons into the nucleus. We don't have to worry about that too much. The point is, if any molecule uses nitrogen 15 instead of nitrogen 14, it makes it just a tiny bit heavier. If we put it on a scale, it would measure a tiny bit heavier. And by measuring the differences between these, we can actually figure some pretty clever things out. So they took some bacteria, some E. coli bacteria, and they made sure they, had, they only had access to N15. So all the DNA that was made by this bacteria here, all the DNA that was made by this bacteria only had the heavy version of nitrogen. So compared to bacteria that only used the N14, all these bacteria would be slightly heavier. All the DNA in here would be slightly heavier. So you have to understand that concept first. Using N15 would make the DNA heavy. Using N14 would make the DNA lighter. They also are assuming that the bacteria are alive. Well, not assuming. They're making sure that the bacteria are alive and they're happily doing DNA replication. And they've been living inside an N15 solution so much that any of the new bacteria that's being made is all the heavy style. And then they start the timer. They transfer it over to some N14 solution. Now, because the bacteria are continually trying to make new DNA and they're replicating and everything as well too, they're gonna have to keep on using more nitrogen. But 
at this point, at time zero, they transfer it over, they transfer all the bacteria, and the, so the only source of new nitrogen that they have is now of the lighter kind. And there's one more concept you have to understand here. And this is the concept of using something called a centrifuge. So these molecules are so small, it's like putting a tiny drop onto a scale. The scale is not really going to measure any change in mass because the scale that we stand on to measure our weight is not sensitive enough to do that. But on a mini scale like this, what you can do is you can put liquid into a machine that spins really, really fast and it uses the centrifugal force and it actually can separate things out and it creates these, all the heavy things will sink to the bottom, the lighter things will go up towards the top. So by doing this, you can actually put things inside a tube, spin them, and then you can see where bands kind of form. And these bands are where all the similar sized uh, things, similar mass things tend to clump together. So let's try to understand this first picture right here at time zero. At time zero, remember, we've barely, we've just added it into here. No new replication has happened at time zero that incorporates N14. So when I actually take out the DNA, when I spin the bacteria and break them apart, and I try to look for the DNA, the DNA all ends up here at this particular line. And it's an arbitrary number, but I'm looking at the band and I'm thinking, okay, that's how heavy, in quotes, that's how heavy the DNA is that's been living in here for a long time. But because I transferred it to N14, now I let some time pass and hope that replication happens. And this is the crazy part. This band is one of the most important bands that shows up here. Because what it shows is that as time has passed, now the DNA is not as heavy anymore. If I continued to keep it in here and checked again after 20 minutes, I should expect a band that's also at the same point of heaviness here. But for some reason, after 20 minutes, the DNA is no longer as heavy as this. And it's because some of the N14 has been incorporated into the actual DNA. So it's gotten lighter. And as more time passes, we start to see two bands showing up. These two bands are basically showing that some of it is lighter and some of it is even lighter than that. And then that proportion starts to increase while this proportion starts to decrease. So see, if you look at these three different diagrams, here's all heavy, here's all light, here's half heavy, half light. You can see which of these actual diagrams correspond to which bands. So this dark red band right here is actually corresponding to DNA that is made of only nitrogen 15, that has only nitrogen 15 in all its ATCG bases. The orange bands here are representing the only, the light versions, where after some replication has happened, uh, in the end, all of the bacteria that are making DNA and showing up in the orange right here are made up of DNA strands that only have the lighter version of N14. And this middle band here represents this guy, which shows us that DNA replication is actually semi-conservative. It shows that any of the bacteria that ended up in here with their DNA that's ending up in this particular band has half of the band actually consisting of N15 and half of the band consisting of N14. And that makes sense because as DNA actually splits, so here you can see this is a really complicated diagram in real time of how DNA replication is actually happening, these bands actually get split into two. So the DNA strands get split into two and the one side gets replicated and the other side gets replicated. And so you end up with this idea right here. So take a look at these boxes. This band is the key that revealed this idea that it has to be semi-conservative, that the band, that the strands, sorry, are actually splitting and one side is being used as a template and the other side is also being used as a template as well. So try to think about what these results would have looked like if it was not semi-conservative replication. If it was not semi-conservative replication and we all of a sudden transferred the bacteria to N14, then we would probably only end up seeing 
two different bands this dark band down here at the bottom and this top band because any new DNA would only have N14 if it wasn't semi-conservative. But because it is semi-conservative, we can have some DNA molecules where one strand has the heavier nitrogen and one strand has the lighter nitrogen. So it's the existence one more time of this band in the middle which is giving the evidence for semi-conservative replication. If you're having trouble understanding how all of this fits together, there's plenty of animations that are available online and on YouTube, so make sure to check those out. You might be struggling with these two techniques or the background knowledge. What the heck is the difference between N14 and N15? How does that come up? What is an isotope? Why is this heavier than that? And also this technique of a centrifuge as well too, used to separate things. When you spin things, the heavier they are, they go to the bottom. The lighter they are, they don't go to the bottom as much. And so that's those are the two techniques that are really being used here and, and also following the change over time. So that's an overall summary of the Meselson and Stahl experiments and how they figured out that DNA is DNA replication is semi-conservative. Good luck.